when God the Father walked the earth among men. Hmm. Turn to Leviticus chapter 26. It's time to play Kick the Trinitarians again. One of my favorite games I like to play. A lot of people get spoiled by the philosophy of Trinitarianism, and I'm just trying to get them out of it. I love you. Love my enemies. You just need to repent of your wicked idolatry of this pagan trinity concept. I'm going to show you that Jesus Christ and the Father are one and the same being. They're not three separate persons or two separate persons. Okay? Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11 and 12. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. The soul there is speaking of the Father. That's the part of the Godhead there. The soul is the Father. The body is Jesus. The Spirit is obviously the Holy Spirit. Very easy to understand. And if you look at the context here, it's talking. This is the Father talking. Okay? But look at verse 12. And I will walk among you and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. When did the Father walk among the people? He's speaking in future tense. He's not just saying, you know, hey, I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll walk in the sense of fellowship, you know, or some kind of thing. The Trinitarians always have to philosophize everything. They'll say, well, when he says walk, he doesn't actually mean physically walk among them, even though that's clearly what it's saying. It just means that he's walking in the sense of in fellowship or some kind of thing like this. <laughs> uh, let me show you the supporting scriptures in the New Testament that this actually happened. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Behold what manner the love of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Past tense. So Leviticus chapter 26, it's future. I'll walk among you. Here the world knew him not. Speaking of the Father, both references. When did the Father walk among men? And why is it that they didn't know who he was? Hmm. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and, uh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, still talking about the Father, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I thought no man can see the Father. Well, if you're looking at Jesus Christ, then you're looking at the Father. I'll show you that later. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. It's a purifying hope to understand who Jesus Christ is. Romans chapter 1. We'll go to Romans chapter 1, verses uh, 20 through 23. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are, that are made, even, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Hello, Trinitarians. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Trinitarians have lots and lots of images of what they perceive the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to look like. And they're three separate persons. Well, most are two separate persons and a bird. But uh, that's another issue. But notice what it says. Verse 21. When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Why did they crucify Jesus? Because He made Himself the Father. He claimed to be the Father, holy, completely God. That's why the priests were renting their clothes and things and saying, you know, he's, he's committed blasphemy. That's why they wanted to stone him another time. Before Abraham was, I am, he says to him, And they take up stones to stone him. Why? Why? If he was just claiming to be God the Son, what's the big deal? He was claiming to be God, the Father. Let me show you. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 
John chapter 8, verse 12. We'll start there. <clears throat> then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. They're judging him after the flesh, you see. They're not understanding that his soul is the Father, and his spirit is the Holy Ghost. They're just judging his flesh. <clears throat> Verse 16, And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. The Father there. You say, well, that's the Father's up in heaven. He sent Jesus down on an errand. Little boy, go down and do my errand for me. Well, we'll see about that. <clears throat> Verse 17, it is, written, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that beareth, bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? See, again, they're judging after the flesh, just like Trinitarians do. They say, well, see, the testimony of two men. That's two separate people, two separate persons. All right? And Trinitarians will stop right there. They say, see, we can prove two different persons. Oh, no, you can't, because you have to keep reading. Because you see the Jews, just like lost Trinitarians, they say, where is your father? They're looking for the other person there. They're thinking two different persons. <clears throat> verse 19, Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. Could it be any clearer? Okay. If you know me, then you know my father. That's what Jesus is saying. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he. What's the context? The context is the Father. They're saying, where is your father? We don't see him. If you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Hmm. And yet I've seen professing Bible-believing Christians that say, I'm a King James Bible believer, and they'll remove the word he. You see, because it's in italics, they'll say, well, it's not actually part of the text. Uh, well, I think that the Lord had it put in there for a reason. You see, because it clearly shows that Jesus Christ is the Father. But you get these Trinitarians, and they are so wicked that they'll actually change the King James Bible and say, take out the he, and there it's, it's more accurate. Well, uh, princess, you still have a problem. You call, see, because Jesus said, if you believe not that I am, that's the title of the Father. You're really not proving your point by corrupting the word of God. You ought to just leave it as it stands. John chapter 10. Watch out for people that change the Word of God and then profess to be Bible believers. Got to be careful of that. John chapter 10, verse 22 through 38. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. He's been telling them like crazy. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed me not. Or, and you believe not. And the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. He's healing the blind, causing the maimed to be whole, doing all this other stuff. Uh, we're not sure if you're the Christ. I don't really know. I, you know. The world knoweth us not because it knew him not. The Father says, I'm going to come and walk among you, and I'll be your God. They're saying, I, I don't really know if he's the, the one. <clears throat> verse 26 but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you you don't believe these things because you're lost if ye believe not that I am he ye shall die in your sins 
I reject that Jesus is the Father. Okay, then you're going to die in your sins and go to hell, Trinitarian. Do you understand that? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now watch it. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Wait a second. Jesus said you can't pluck them out of my hand. You can't pluck them out of my Father's hand. Well, I've said this before, but, you know, the Father and the Son aren't up in heaven playing catch the Christian. Okay? Um, let's throw them back and forth, and, and, and hopefully the devil won't try to, you know, the devil's the monkey in the middle, you know, trying, ooh, trying to grab the Christian or something, you know, so that it doesn't land in the hand of the Father or the Son. Uh, or it could be the same being. You know, the soul is inside the body. So you can say the Father's hand and the Son's hand is one and the same hand. You understand? That even rhymed. I should get extra credit for that. Verse 30. I and my Father are one in unity and purpose and, and, and divine essence, you know, perfume. Uh, no, it says they're one, period. I and my Father are one. You know what? I and my soul are one. Get saved and you understand it. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Why? Why do they want to stone him? Because he's trying to say that he's the Father. Why do you Trinitarians want to stone Jesus? Because he says, when, or want to stone people like me because I say Jesus is the Father. I mean, what's the big deal, really? Why do you get so angry? Jesus is not the Father. Why? Why do you get so mad about that? I've always thought that was kind of weird. I mean, just kind of say, oh, you're, you're just a little bit dumb. You don't quite understand. Why the emotion? Why the anger? Like the Pharisees of old. Hmm. Reckon there's a connection? Verse 32, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works or those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. When they knew him, they glorified him not as God, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. You know what a Trinitarian really is? An atheist. You don't believe in the God of the Bible. You believe in a three-headed monster. Three different persons up there. It's, it's just such, it just defies just common sense, people. There's three different gods, but there's only one God. And the one God consists of three gods, but there are only one God. You're a liar! <clears throat> Verse 34, Jesus answered them, is it, it is, is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of whom, him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe, me, believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. It says in fellowship. It's in, in fellowship. It doesn't say in fellowship. The Father is in him, and he is in, in the Father. That can only be said when you're the same being. John chapter 14, verses 6 through 10. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Um, how true a statement when Jesus Christ is the Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. I will be your God, and walk among you. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. See how it all ties together? Old Testament prophecy, Leviticus, looking way out into the future when the Messiah would come. 
God, the Father, is going to walk among the people. New Testament, looking back, saying, the world knew him not. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Jesus Christ, when he came in the past. Verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? I've gone over that verse so many times, Trinitarians still do not get it, because they're lost. They're of their father, the devil. I mean, it's just as plain as day. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, that's, that's in unity. That's their, you, you smell the divine essence and, then, and therefore, you know, the, they're wearing the same perfume or something. Uh, no, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. They're the same being. You say, well, that's modalism. No, modalism is that Jesus is a transformer and he transforms from the Son to the Father to the Holy Spirit. But they're never separate. Uh, no, body, soul, spirit is separate. They can separate. See my other, other studies on that. Souls in heaven, Revelation chapter 6, saying, How long, O Lord, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood upon the earth? Soul in heaven, body on the ground. The Bible teaches that we are absent, you know, being absent from the body, being present with the Lord. The Bible teaches that. The Bible says that we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Body and soul can separate, absolutely. That's why you see Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're separate in the sense of a body, soul, and spirit. But they're not three separate people. Verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The Father that dwelleth in me. You say, but it says, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Yeah, you can say that about your body and your soul. Okay? They're connected. It's the same being. But some of the Trinitarians just still don't get it. They refuse to accept the fact that Jesus is completely holy God. They will not submit themselves to that. Jesus is lower. He's the second member, the first loser, as we used to say years ago. Um, and they'll just lie. They'll just keep on lying and lying and lying because they don't have the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> Plain and simple. So uh, if you're listening to some liar that's a Trinitarian and really truly a Trinitarian, they're not just confused by the philosophy of Trinitarianism, um, get away from them. Okay? Because you're listening to a lost person. Um, they don't understand who Jesus Christ is. So that is going to be it. Um, don't mess with Trinitarians, okay? They're very dangerous.